guys, and welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on the YouTube account and we are talking about min maxing engraving. Um, so this is kind of the advanced engraving guide. Um, Obsidian Cutie has a very cool guide, which I'll put the link right down below. Um, I kind of want to go through kind of explaining as he does um, what it means. So kind of the theory crafting around engraving is there are stats to particular heroes that are going to make them a lot stronger, whether just doing, you know, the 30, the 60, the 80, the 100 engraving. There are specific stats for specific heroes um, that you can kind of min-max depending on what you're doing. So that is kind of what they're breaking down with this guide itself. So the first one, guys, that we're going to look at is Grez. So again, I'm going to be looking at this. I'm really going to try to break it down with a couple of heroes in here. The video is going to be a little bit longer than normal just because there is so much detail to this, which again, you can kind of check out. So Grez, guys, we know is one of the absolute core heroes in AFK Arena. I built him right here with all of the tier four gear. When you look at the engraving itself, um, there are actually a couple different ways to build him and again, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to show on here because of the eternal engraving. So um, engraving to 11 is really what you want to focus on with the nodes themselves. Um, the crit node, very important. Also with the crit damage amplification, some of the nodes are far more important than others, such as the haste. Now this actual node right here provides additional haste to Grez. Haste is going to allow him to actually ult faster. Ulting faster means more skeletons um, through his skills and abilities is going to provide more shields, which in turn are going to kind of add more damage to Grez, which is exactly what you're looking for. So first, engraving to 11 is the priority. Again, focusing on the HP node to five, um, the crit node to three, and then also looking on the haste node to three. So that would actually be, if you look the ones right up here, here's the crit. So the HP and then moving on to the crit and then moving up to the haste. So kind of building it on this kind of art to our left with Grez. Um, next would be 36. So now you're taking Grez all the way to the plus 30 and then doing the three or 36. So actually doing the same thing, um, investing in the major nodes, um, crit block resistance and uh, magic resistance. Minor node, of course, taking this haste and this crit again up a little bit higher. Um, once you get a little bit further, you'll actually max this out just like I do the 60 of 80. Now, a big kind of, again, the min maxing on this one. So from here, the max would be going to 61. So actually taking this specific glyph, um, leveling it up just one more time to do seven of seven. But this will actually allow him to add on a little bit of addition hate, additional haste. Since you're already building him at 60, you can actually put him to 61, which is ideally where he wants to build. So pretty easy when you get to, you know, more on the end game, building Grez to 61 because he's core in the Twisted Realm. Um, the Cursed Realm and also the campaign with Grez Ulna is the way to kind of build him out. Um, again, that, that 61 would be the next step to build him. Next here we look at, guys, is Oden. Oden, second Greyborn, guys, to really build. And this is more of an advanced guide. Again, only Greyborn comp is awesome with Oden. Um, he is very, very important and very driven by the stats. You can see right here we have this three, which is the key glyph right here. This one you actually do have to level up to five before you unlock the rest of these glyphs, just like what you've seen right there. Um, but once you go, the E11 is what you're going to, so that... So the um, first note, of course, is gonna be this one. Building to 11 is kind of what you want to look for. So over here, guys, we have attack, we have crit damage amplification. Over here, we have HP and we have physical resistance. And then looking over at the nodes on this side, um, most more important ones, um, magical pierce, of course, is more damage. And then crit are two really big ones to build. So I'm just kind of following the guide over here, beginning investment. Um, five in the HP, which we have exactly right here. We have five in the defense and the dodge. Um, and then this one is the HP. So we actually have five here and then we have five here. So five in the HP node. And again, I'm just trying to find three in the minor node would give you. So one, two, three, four, and five will actually illuminate our next node. Now this is the one with the MP node. So we got five, we have 10 and then one, two, three, We'll actually max it out here, guys. So that is the very beginning. So that is the 11 that you want to build them to. Um, giving the secondary stat, of course, 
right here we do get the magical pierce and we do get the crit but then looking magical pierce and haste guys super important for that one as you continue to build this around um would be the next one next goal from this kind of the e11 is the 33 again investing in all, five in all major nodes i'm um, investing in the magical pierce and the extra haste in crit if he dies quickly um e41 is recommended going for the attack and the crit damage amplification again he is just an absolute monster when it comes to damage um Leaving Oden at 41 if you're not endgame. If you are endgame, guys, taking him to a 60 will increase his damage a considerable amount. So next one we look at is Pharrell. Um, Pharrell is a hero that is, uh, honestly, between the crowd control, between the energy disintegration, um, his skills and abilities, guys, are pretty much unmatched by any other hero. Um, is very unique, is used early game, is used end game. Now looking in here, guys, um, best investment is the E16. So actually building him up to um, 16, which is a focus on building him an HP defense. Of course, these major nodes do have to be unlocked before we unlock um, the rest of the other nodes. And then looking for the investment in accuracy, which is haste as a secondary stat accuracy and haste remember guys the faster haste the faster abilities the more he is going to be effective within there um so now he kind of gets into the the um the the magic resistance and the insight um why the insight is so important applying crowd control to every hero insight gives a higher chance of the hero applying effective cc which is exactly what we do get with Grez. So when you look at this insight, guys, you want the crowd control to not be resisted. Um, this will allow it to not actually be resisted, which is the reason why players do build him out. Now, ultimately, he is going to go to this plus 30 because we want to get this additional second for Terrorize. Again, a lot of players don't understand how important it is to get that plus 30 on Pharrell because of the additional one second. Every time he actually uses this skill right here, which is Terrorize, it is extended by another second, which again, can be a game changer when it comes to the heroes. Next one we look at guys is of course Silas. Silas guys, super important hero within AFK Arena. Um, main healer on the grass, he is the combination and he also does a big damage boost in there as well. Um, E13, defense attack nodes, and also magical pierce. So looking kind of the these ones. And again, the priority glyphs, you do have to build them out before you build out the rest of the glyphs. And then we have the magic pierce and the haste in here, which is super effective because um, as you're building out the magical pierce, um, it's gonna do more damage. And then also the haste is going to allow him to use those abilities faster, which is exactly what you want to. Next goal would be the E30, which is um, built right here. So it'll actually, allies recover 40% of the attack rating, which is a much bigger heal. And then the goal after that with the main priority would be the E60, because this one, guys, gives a reduction in damage. That is right, guys, 10% less damage. Now the clouds do not stack. With the Healing Haze ability, um, these clouds do not stack. It can only reduce it by 10%. But when you look at all the grass combination, guys, a 10% damage reduction is really good in there, which will actually reduce the retries that you do. And the final one in here, guys, Damon and Hodgkin, or um, Hodgkin right here, and then Damon, um, both of them are just building out. Won't cover them, they're not the key, key units. Um, but when you come in the hunting fields, when you come in the AE, they are very strong when you build them to a plus 16 graving for those. So Maulers, guys, much easier on the Maulers. Kren is a big priority. I've been actually building them out. We're at 43 right now. So Kren is really haste dependent, guys. The faster that you can actually get Kren to alt, the better he is going to do. Um, a lot of players would build him, and we do build him in the guide up to 33 um, 13 would be the first investment, investing in defense, HP node, um, and then of course haste, that would be your 13. Next would be going to 33 um, with the investment in all major nodes and miners, and then haste again. So once you do get all of these built up, you're going to focus on building out the haste one a little bit further. And then of course, when you start getting into further, when you actually get into endgame, key is the, the E30. So this actually allows the energy points um, 
to, to really go through the roof when it comes to Kren. Also, the physical pierce is going to allow him to do more damage, which is very, very strong, guys. 60 is good for endgame. And then, of course, similar to what we did with Grez, using 61 to build out the haste here just a little bit more. If you're already going with Kren for the 60, Endgame, guys, this is actually going to make a pretty big difference because it's getting a 50% reduction from all enemies except the targeted enemy that he has on there. Now, next year we look at the Maulers is Drez, guys. Drez is a absolute solo machine. Now, he is one of the absolute primary heroes when it comes to the Abyssal Expedition. Out of there, he is really not used for much maybe the mauler tower but if you're not competitive with the ae within the abyssal expedition there's really not much of a use to build him which the next one we look at of course is the the mauler form of Isold. same thing um she needs the e60 which is really a big priority we've seen her fall off a little bit in the meta but the 60 she has right here guys is what actually keeps her alive through an incredible amount of damage so taking her to the E60, if you really want her to be effective, is exactly where you're going to build her. Now, Iran meta in the campaign, he is absolutely super RNG, um, often dies with the, the five pole. So looking, investing in the HP and defense nodes, of course, are gonna deal with some of the issues that we have within these two nodes with survivability. And then of course, we wanna look at the haste in the dodge. So up here, I believe is the haste in the physical pierce allowing him again to get those ultimate abilities off even quicker. So they go with E60 with both of those nodes. And then E30, E60 on him really don't bring anything special. So there's not any reason. Now Raku is an exception, guys. Raku is an engraving monster. Um, a lot of people say um, he's kind of fallen out of the meta, but in a lot of different team comps, he is still utilized within the Wilder Tower, especially when you get to two teams. Um, he is a monster when it comes to damage. So looking at him, you know, that he's used a lot with haste, guys. Not only does he provide this peckish ability, which gives him a lot of additional haste, um, enjoys haste, crit, physical pierce, which is awesome, can burn through tanks pretty quick, investment for the beginner, E16, which of course is our defense and our HP nodes, just like normal, and then investing in the haste and the accuracy, which is actually right up here. Um, haste accuracy is a good combination. Even haste and dodge are pretty good because those regular attacks are what really make him um, strong. Once you get past that, 44 would be ideal. Prolonging attack defense for that buff because you'll actually have this for 10 seconds, which is really strong. Um, but again, attack, haste, accuracy are what you actually need to build him out. Um, and, and honestly, the... the Stats, and he talks about kind of um, Obsidian, Cutie kind of talks about the gear. The the tier three gear here works really well with him. Um, if Raku is taking damage, majority of the time he's gonna die, even having that engraving. So guys, taking him up to that plus, or engraving at 44, and actually building out a couple more, including the attack, physical pierce, the accuracy and the haste, and the haste and the dodge to really do the survivability with him. Then, of course, guys, we have Mishka. She is just an absolute monster. Um, really huge meta hero. Has made an absolute dynamite stance within meta. Can tank, which is pretty funny because most heroes cannot tank at all. Um, not utilized, or she is actually utilized in the campaign. Um, the Cursed Realm Abyssal Expedition, pretty much everywhere because not only does she have the ability to tank, but she also does a damage boost. She can shield and heal the allies. Um, she is one of the biggest heroes to a plus 60 priority because natural rejuvenation will go on all allies, healing and shielding, very strong within there, guys. Lightbearers, Scarlet is really the go-to here. Um, the more stats that you're putting on Scarlet, the really the, the better that she is going to, per, to perform. Even taking her to the E60, guys, is just all about stats. If you want to go a little bit further, you can actually go through and do some of the, um, which one is it? So some more of the attack. Attack, of course, going to make a big difference. And then the Magical Pierce increasing the damage in there, which is just absolute stats, guys. If you're using her to push the Twisted Realm, if you're using her to maximize damage, some of the boosted attack rating that you're actually going to get out of here can really set the precedence with how much damage she's going to really do. 
Um, Ruzline's another hero that we look at. Um, key figure, Charmizard comp, we know she follows Mahira. Um, in the tower, she actually follows Rose, which is awesome. Rose needs haste and dodge, guys. So again, the first ones we do have to build just like we normally do, but then you start getting into the side ones. Um, which is there's dodge and there is haste right here. Haste and dodge are the really two ones to focus on building her out. I already have her at nine. I build her out a little bit. I'm um, just kind of plus playing around with the engraving, but you want to take her to essentially the 21 building the haste and also building the dodge within there. Then a lot of players, and I'm kind of on the fence with this one, um, is Astrilda. Astrilda with the engraving, 30, definitely, this is what a lot of players do. Attack ratings increase by 40%. That makes a really big difference, guys. 40% boost to the attack rating. Um, putting her in a team, not only do you pick up survivability when it comes to unlocking the signature item, but you also do have a big haste or a big attack boost in there um, getting that 40% attack rating boost, which is really strong. Now, when it comes to our Celestials and our Dimensionals, a little bit different, um, Lucretia, guys, build her up. E60 is the priority, guys. Build Lucretia. She is one of the absolute solo monsters in the AFK arena. Um, I would absolutely build her. A lot of players actually do 80 or 100 because she is the Celestial and the Hypogen. She can actually go up that far, meaning that when it comes to physical pierce, when it comes to attack accuracy, attack speed, um, even just raw attack, she can absolutely break heroes, guys. Stacking more haste on her, of course, the abilities are going to trigger more um, faster. But after 60, accuracy and life leech are the really two. Investing in the cr um, attack, crit damage, amplification within both of those. Zolrath, when we start engraving Zolrath, um, key unit, the Abyssal Expedition, um, within the hunting fields, also the towers, of course, Charmizard is where he's in. Having him at a plus 30 engraving, very important, guys, because of the attack rating. Zolras attack rating increased by 1.2% per second until it reaches 80%. That is right, guys. Attack rating increase of 80%, which is absolutely broken. Um, next milestone would be 41, focusing on um, two real things here, which is the crit damage amplification, haste as the secondary, and then the physical pierce, amount, allowing him to do a considerable amount of damage. Then what we have don't really look at, guys, is Mortis. Um, Mortis is one, again, campaign, Abyssal Expedition, Twisted Realm, Cursed Realm, all really there. Um, plus 13 is really all you want to build him up. Just getting him some more HP, attack, and crit within there. Now, Halius is a hero that we recently built. Um, Halius is the plus 60. Guys, his engraving is absolutely broken. Right here, giving the energy regeneration when they have the shields. Halius is one you want to build to 60. Um, the stats are super beneficial when you're building him out, which is the reason why we want to take him to plus 60. Now, a lot of people on the fence, kind of with Alna, um, I believe the stats, um, haste is super important for Alna, which is the reason why we built her out. We actually built her out to the plus 60 because not only losing the dodge, so this is a similar effect of what we see with like a Brutus. Um, losing 320 dodge is huge. And then of course, doing a little bit of damage, but you really want to focus on the haste um, e E36 would be ideal, so actually building her out to get this plus 30, which is what we want for that dodge reduction, but then focusing on Ulna um, when it comes to haste in the crit block resistance, so she's taking less damage. And just a couple more heroes here, guys. Um, next one is the twins, of course, with the engraving. We built them up to 38, which 38 is the recommended the recommended build so i built them exactly how we were supposed to um 38 of 100 focusing on the haste in the major defense um which has a secondary in haste which i think it's right over here magical pierce it is uh physical pierce dodge tenacity right there haste and healing um is the one that we built and then i believe there's one other right here that is haste and defense essentially you're just stacking haste which is very true to majority of the heroes within the AFK arena. Um, haste is the buff. Then, of course, guys, we have Ein's E60. Easy, very, very easy hero to take to the E60. Um, you absolutely want this ability, guys. Attack rating is increased by 7% per second. Defense by 12. Doing more damage with Ein's, guys. He's an absolute monster. And the final one that we look at is Leonardo da Vinci. He is actually right here building out his engraving. 
Um, the E33 is really what you want to, so bringing out the cooldown timer with this cannon, which is gonna provide some crowd control. And then of course, just building out a little bit more haste, which is right here, guys. So you'll actually do the plus 30, drop three more points in here once it's illuminated. I'm giving him just a little bit more haste, which means he's gonna use that resonance or Renaissance cannon a little bit faster, guys. So again, I'm gonna put a link to the guide down below. This is a really in-depth engraving guide on how you should build them. Um, for specifics, go ahead and look through here. There are some great comments over here on Reddit. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.